Alright, good morning, afternoon or evening everyone. Today I'm going to be covering the tier 7 Tech 3 Heavy Cruiser, the new one. The Spanish one, the Asturias, I think that's how it's pronounced, but I'm not sure. Um, here's what it looks like. To me, it reminds me of Brindisi. It seems to have like a similar superstructure or whatever. Um, and it, it's just like a junior, I guess, a Brindisi junior, I guess, in terms of looks alone. But of course, the ship is quite significantly different. Um, and I will cover the ship characteristics, my build, etc. Um, on the ship. And I'll also cover a game, which I already played, so it'll be like a commentary, I guess. But it's a usual video, of course. But anyway, so Asturias, it's a new ship. Right now, you can't really get it for grinding yet. I have it because I think you can get it, maybe. I don't know if it's in the armory. I don't exactly know where you can get it. But it doesn't matter, it's going to be a tech ship, so you can just wait and get it. Uh, let's see, actually, is it here? Yeah, you can get it here. But uh, I think you should wait and get it for free later on because it's a texture ship. But this will serve as a review for when you can get it for free or if you already have the ship already. Um, but anyway, so it'll be, it will be available for tech tree, just grinding the Spanish line. I think it's next patch or the patch after. I'm not sure 100% on that. But here it is. Um, so what is it? Well, it's a heavy cruiser, of course. I'm actually going to start off with the armor layout on it. It has a 16mm nose, 25mm deck armor, 16mm aft, and then your side is like 30, but you also have 25, and this is the Citadel, I guess, so be careful, because it is really, really big, and you can get smashed really easily in it, um, because it is a tier 7 cruiser after all. As we know, tier 7 cruisers get smashed quite easily, so you have to be really careful. Um, for my commander build, I have gun feeder, so, well, oops. Gun feeder, grease the gears, eye in the sky, superintendent, survivability expert, adrenaline rush, concealment expert, and top grade gunner. For my equipment, I have prop mod 1, aiming system mod 1, hydro search mod 1, but if you don't have hydro search, take engine room protection. And I'm also using spotting aircraft mod 1, but if you don't have that, you should take main armaments mod 1. Um, I'm also using the spotter plane, and I'm using the hydro. For the camo, for the ship, it only has one perma camo, uh, which is just a plain grey, I guess. It is what it is. Spanish camos look like this, by the way. They're like bluish, I guess. Dark blue. Uh, but the premium camo or the perma camo is uh, grey. <laughs> pretty, pretty sad that it doesn't have like a really cool one, I guess. But you get to see the big Spanish flags on the side. Um, I'll cover the ship characteristics now. If you want to skip to the gameplay, you totally can. Um, I'll keep the video chaptered for you guys who just want to see the gameplay. Um, so for survivability, we have 42,750 HP, which is quite a lot for tier 7. Plus, we do have a heal on top of that, which is quite useful on a tier 7 ship. Um, we also have 203s because it is a heavy cruiser. 13 second reload, so not the fastest reload ever. But you do get burst fire ability. What that's going to do is you're going to get two salvos off with the guns um, instead of one but then you have to wait 32 seconds for it to reload um, but sometimes it can be pretty useful the fire chance on the HE is 17% which is quite high you also have 34 millimeters of pen which is good at, against tier 7s and 8s and 9s etc but 17% fire chance is quite high for the steer so that is pretty good torpedoes you have 8 km torps uh, 4 per side uh, they're just normal torps, I guess. Nothing too crazy about them. Airstrike ASW, which is good because it's better than ship base. You have 6 game range, which isn't too good, but it's tier 7, I guess. A defense, I don't think it's anything to be special about. Maneuverability, top speed is 36.8 knots. Not too slow. I think it's actually quite fast, to be honest. Uh, so it's not too bad. You can run around the map pretty quick, so it's pretty good. The turn circle radius is quite large, and the rudder shift time is 10 seconds, so it's not too fast. For concealment, you have 12.4 detection, which isn't too good, but against other tier 7 cruisers, heavy cruisers, you're actually pretty, pretty similar, I guess, so it's not too bad. Um, but that's the Asturias, of course we have a heal, we're running Hydro, and I'm using Spotter Plane. Um, but I think we should get into the game in the Asturias. Alright, so here we are on Haven. I already played this match, by the way, so it's going to be like a commentary style. So I'm just going to say what's going on, etc. Why I'm going to certain positions in the Asturias and everything. 
Um, but oh my god, okay. <laughs> I'm like, what's going on? But uh, um, basically, I'm gonna go south side here because uh, we spawned this side, so it's best off to go this side. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna skip till something happens. All right, so here we are in the gameplay. We found an Agato, okay. So we're gonna start shooting him. 30 second, 13 second reload, so not too fast, but should be able to unload some damage. Now we do have to be careful because we are a tier 7 cruiser and that means we can get smashed pretty easily by AP. And the Nelson's here, so we could actually get smashed by Nelson, HE as well. Not Citadel, but we can get hit quite hard. He can set fires, we can take a lot of damage. Um, but yeah, so top grade gunner, whenever these guys are going to be spotted, it's going to be activated because our concealment's not that good. Um, so we're going to get a reload buff, 10%, I think. So it's going down to 11.7 second reload, which isn't too bad. Um, it's actually not 10%. No, no, it is 10%. <laughs> so we're going to farm the Nelson a bit, try to chuck some damage at him. I was thinking of FKing him here. We're going to Hydro for nothing, really and truly. There's nothing. There's no need, to be honest, because the Minsk is on the other side. Um, but we get some AP damage, 6.8k damage, which isn't too bad. Um, now Nelson does have a super heal. The Sagano, man, I really want to shoot him. He's a he's a light cruiser, so if we can get an FK on him, we can get quite a lot of damage on him. The question is if he will go broadside. You mean you see me like switching the F button on and off because I'm not sure what he's doing, but he's not going full broadside. That's for sure, sadly. Um, so it's pretty much useless. We actually. I mean, we're kind of wasting a lot of time here because we could have gotten a shot on the Nelson, to be honest, in the meantime. But it is what it is. Um, we're just waiting for him. We're waiting for the Zagano. He's going full broadside right now. Loading our FK AP. Shooting. And we get zero damage. Zero damage. Two salvos in a row. Pretty good. And Nelson sets us on fire. Um, we're reloading. I think we should just stay farming the battleships, to be honest. I think that would be way easier <laughs> overall. Uh, mostly the Nagato, actually. Sorry. Because the Nagato is bow in, so it should be relatively free to damage him. Um, so we reload here. I'm going to switch to HE, of course, because AP is useless in the situation against a bow and Nagato. We have spotter plane, which is nice and important. So we're able to actually get into range. You do get 19 kilometers of range with spotter plane on, which is quite good actually. Um, for tier 7 cruisers, you know, as as you know, most of the tech trees do not have a heal. So when one of them has a heal, you know, it's actually quite a good thing. Um, it, it makes the ship quite playable. And the fact that you have spotter plane and hydro and stuff, and pretty decent HE I would say, because the fire chance so, is so high, you can actually play the Asturias quite well. Um, I will try to cover the other Spanish cruisers if you would like me to in the future, guys. Because I haven't really covered any videos on the Spanish cruisers. And as you know, I'm a cruiser player, so I like cruisers a lot. Uh, but I haven't covered them at all. Uh, but if you want to see more Spanish cruiser content, I can totally cover them in the future video, etc. The, the one I've played the most is the Tier 9. I actually enjoy it quite a lot, the Andalusia or whatever. I enjoy playing it quite a lot, so if you want to see a video on that one, I can. I can't make a video on Castilla just yet, because I don't have it yet. Um, so we're trying to F key here to try to get a perma fire on the guy. Um, I don't know about the F key here, but uh, I do believe we end up getting a fire. Yeah, we do. So it's actually quite weird, because we're going to stack damage there very fast. But as you can see, the fire chance, we're up to 5 fires over 62 shell hits, which is quite a lot. Um... So, we're stacking up damage relatively quickly, especially on the Snagato, who has double fire from us, by the way. Um, what I'm trying to do here is, well, I think I'm AFK on, on, on Instagram or something, or on Spotify, because I clearly was not moving for a solid 15 seconds there, which is quite interesting. But it is what it is. Um, we're going to engage the Nelson again. See if we can get some damage on him. He's pre-kited, but it's okay. The Nagato might die. Yes, he died. We end up getting an Arsonist on him, which is pretty good. It's pretty cool. 5.6k uh, HE salvo there, by the way. Pretty crazy. Um, it's not super exciting gameplay or something. It's not like you're going to get insane gameplay. But it is consistent, I believe. I think the HE is actually pretty good. The fact that you have a heal is pretty good. Hydro, Spotter Plane. It's all pretty good. The only downside, I guess, is you're a tier 7 cruiser, so you suffer from tier 7 cruisers, 
which is uh well you're a cruiser so you get settled really easily um but it's okay and you also get smashed by anything really but it's okay it is what it is it's tier 7 um but the ship is pretty fun man i have to say i think the ship is pretty good i don't know why my rudder is locked on q it, i'm not i'm not turning left but i think it's a replay bug um to me this almost feels like an algeri um i don't know if you guys have ever played algeri i think i've covered it in a previous video i'm not 100 percent sure if i haven't i will for sure because it's one of my favorite ships in the game but uh it is a pretty good ship algeri this one is quite similar to algeri because it has those eight guns and you go quite fast i guess and you're a heavy cruiser so you have similarities plus you have an f key almost but well the reload boost is obviously better than the f key always but um yeah i think you can do pretty well in this ship now sadly this game i couldn't really show fkap on cruisers for example which could have been really fun to showcase but sadly i wasn't able to because well the agano we didn't really sit at it or anything um but it is what it is we're getting to farm the Piotr now. Now Piotr is quite tanky, but you can hit the superstructure and farm her quite easily. Um, so it shouldn't be too bad overall. We got a fire as well, but he does have Soviet DCP, so he's gonna take a DCP really early. We're gonna get one salvo off. We might actually use FK, I'm not sure. The concealment's so bad that you can actually uh, spam... Sorry, you can actually get uh, top grade gunner always almost in this ship, unless you're with spotter plane. And I'm using eye in the sky by the way, so I can get quicker reload on the spotter planes, because it is quite useful to have quicker reload on the spotter planes to be honest. Um, because we want to get <laughs> into range, sometimes we just need to be in range, right? So it's important. Uh, we get another fire, we're up to 9 fires right now, which is quite a lot of fires to be honest. Um, we're up to 105k damage. Arc Royal, I thought he was dropping me, but he's actually not dropping me. He goes for the October Revolution behind me, which is really nice, because I think he would have, like, smashed me, maybe. Actually, maybe not. His pen isn't that high. Uh, sorry. I just woke up. <laughs> I just woke up. Um, so the ship in front of us is a York. I make a critical error against the York, which is forgetting he has pretty decent AP, and I go full broadside like a dog. I think what I thought here is, I thought I wasn't going to get spotted or something behind this island. But clearly, I mean, we're moving forward, he's moving forward. I get spotted by aircraft anyway. Um, so, we have to be really careful. But we are full broadside. I'm not even trying to angle, I'm just taking it to the head. Um, we load AP. Yeah. But, but he also loads AP. And he actually does... It's double set on me, I think. He gets 8.4k damage, which is quite a lot. Um, but it is what it is. Um, now, I'm in a shit situation because I'm low HP, but he's going full broadside as well. So I'm gonna F key him now and hope we can smash him. Zero, double citadel though, 11k, not bad. We got 11k plus 400, so we're around 12k damage, not too bad. This time we do angle to the York AP, so we actually live on around 7000 HP. I'm gonna try shoot the Surrey here, but I don't think I make the shells in time or something. Oh my god, I'm yelling too much. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, he dies. I'm sorry, I'm yelling too much, man. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we're up to 127k damage, so not too bad. Um, we're doing quite okay. The problem is now, well, there's a CV in the game, so we can just get perma dropped, and we only have 6,000 HP left. And there's also a Budioni who's able to free farm us from, from that range. Plus, we don't have much HP left, so we're probably just gonna end up dying for the Budioni. What I can try do, I guess, is try to get an FK salvo on the Budioni before I die. Boom, boom. Uh, but I do believe we do end up taking the Torp and die, maybe. Yeah, we do. GG. We do get a Citadel on the Budioni, which isn't too bad. And our damage racks up to 134,000. Which, honestly, for a tier 7 cruiser is quite good. Now, we were in a tier 5 game, but honestly, you can do quite well in regardless tier. I mean, compared to other tier 7 cruisers, just because of the spotter plane and the hail, which is something which is really nice to have. Um, but I think we should check out the score. Alright, so for personal score, we ended up getting 134,000 damage, 163 shell hits, 10 fires, 3 citadels, 2 kills, and we got arsonist. 
For team score, we got top of the team at 1.9k base XP, which isn't too bad overall, I guess. Um, for detailed report, we got 53k damage on the Nelson, 41k on the Nagato. That's where our majority of the damage came. And then we also damaged the York a bit and the Pyotr and some chip damage on all the ships. We received 62,000 damage, which is quite a lot actually for a tier 7 cruiser. And damage caused the ships, as you can see, 134,000, mostly from HE and fires, but we also had 34,000 from AP as well. For credits and XP, we ended up getting 293,000 credits, 7,000 XP, 800 free XP, and 8.9k commander XP. But for my commander build, once again, I have Gunfeeder, Grease the Gears, Eye in the Sky, Superintendent, Survivability Expert, Concealment Expert, Adrenaline Rush, Top Grey Gunner. And for equipment, I have spotter, Spotting Aircraft Mod 1, Hydro Search Mod 1, Aiming System Mod 1, and Prop Mod 1. And by the way, for those of you who are wondering what should your first 10 skill points be, it should be probably, honestly, let's see, actually, the Tire Traverse. Yeah, okay, it should be Gun Feeder, Eye in the Sky, and then it should be probably Superintendent, Concealment, and Adrenaline Rush. You can switch Superintendent for Adrenaline Rush, pick your favorite, but then Concealment, and then Top Grade Gunner, and the last points into Survivability Expert, and then Grease the Gears. Of course, you're going to be specking it for the Tier 10. This is the same build I use for the Tier 10, by the way, so you can just use the same build. Um, but in terms of is the Asturias good, it's actually quite a good ship, yes. Um, so yeah, I, I actually quite like it. Um, if you want to see me cover Catalonia or Andalusia or Beleares or something, or Galicia at most, I'm not going to cover the low tier ones. But uh, if you want to see me cover the rest, let me know in the comments below. I would greatly appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. And I hope it helped you maybe, I don't know, to see and understand the playstyle of the Asturias potentially. And maybe improve your playstyle or something if you don't know how to play the Asturias. I don't know. Um, but like I said, guys, I would appreciate a sub or a, a like or something. Or a share to the video because it does help out the channel quite a lot. And I, I'm, I'm happy. Ah, oh, sorry. <laughs> I thank you guys for watching the content. Because, of course, if you guys didn't watch, I wouldn't really create content. Now would I? Um, but that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, I will see you in the next video. So let me know what that should be <laughs> in the comments. But yeah, um, big fan. <laughs>